Glory to God, Wednesday evening worship service. Hello, beloved church family. Praise God, hallelujah. Oh my goodness, God is good. All the time. Just keeps getting gooder and gooder. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless his holy name, praise God. I am so thankful, so honored. I'm not worthy. I'm just so thankful, so honored. To be blessed through Lord Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit would, would plant us, be rooted with other brothers and sisters, beloved children of God, that just want to worship Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That just want to love on the Father and just be thankful. Hallelujah. To choose to be thankful. To choose to be a blessing unto God Almighty. Amen? Can you say that with me? I choose to bless Father God. Amen? See, to, to, to some right now, praise God, and I pray so, that right there is life-changing. Amen? Because I, I believe with all my heart, especially in this chaotic, fallen world that we live in, that we're always going to the Father, going, give me, give me, give me, give me. And, and my challenge to you is how far would a relationship go when that's your approach in your part of that relationship, right? I'll tell you right now, Sister Trish would put me in a chicken wing and be like, we need to talk. <laughs> Amen? Right? But yet, I, I, I believe strongly, and hear my heart, beloved church family, before we open up in prayer, as we always do, whether it's Pastor John, myself, we always open up in prayer. The Holy Spirit just wanted to plant this thought right now, that how far would your relationship go with whoever it is when one party is just saying, give me, and doesn't even want to listen? Amen? And once again, I am so thankful. Hallelujah. So thankful. Praise God. More than I could say this in Jesus' name because God knows my heart. Amen? More than umpteen times a day just being thankful. Hallelujah. For Lord Jesus Christ, thankful for Holy Spirit's breath. Do that with me. Take a breath. <sighs> Our eternal breath. Amen? And thankful that I am planted, rooted, in Holy Spirit's church, amen? Open arms, community church, with brothers and sisters, amen? That we just come as we are. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. God loves us all the same. The bottom line is Jesus Christ is Lord, amen? For those who are disobedient, running away from the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you're listening to this right now, and hallelujah, that Holy Spirit has your attention, amen? Because I'll tell you right now, it's nobody but Holy Spirit. He has all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Agape. Amen. Say it with me. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All the glory, honor, and praise. We want none of it. We don't touch it. Amen. All we are is mouthpieces. All we are is temples for God's light. Hallelujah. Agape to shine through. Amen. Praise God. So I pray that this worship service blesses you this evening. Praise God. And um, it, it, it's, it's going to be a, a deep one. It's going to be hard at the same time hallelujah and um god got us amen in everything he's the one he's the one that we just said it he's the one that teaches us and he's the one that speaks the word and he's the only one amen that can change us if we allow him to praise god and i pray that you allow him to just flow through your heart to renew your mind amen let's just get out of this amen and we're just so thankful glory to god the time is coming soon family Beloved church family, the time is coming soon. Amen. I, I, I don't know what else to tell people other than we're just going to keep plugging in and worship. Be obedient to what Holy Spirit has for us. Amen. Love one another. We don't judge one another. No grumbling. No complaining. Amen. Submit. Hallelujah. We submit to Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we call him Lord. Amen. He is our Lord, our God, our Savior. That means we're his property. Amen. And being his property... Holy Spirit tells us to submit, amen, to submit, just, just, just worship, Father God, be thankful, amen, forgive, hallelujah, and just be a blessing, praise God. Let's pray, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. For eternity, Father, we worship you. For eternity, Father, we worship you. And I'm, I'm so thankful, Father God, now. I'm so thankful, Father God, right now, 
that you bless your holy church, your holy children, your holy people with that anointing, that gift that only comes through your presence, Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of Holy Spirit. That, Father God, I am surrounded by worshipers. We are all planted in you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we just say thank you, Father, for all of eternity. But, Father, I plead your holy and precious blood. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ that you are the name above every name, that Father God has given you all authority and all power and all glory. And Father, as we worship you, the only way we know how is we lift up your holy name, Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are in the Holy of Holies. You are God Almighty. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that as your light shines, your anointing goes before us, Father God. We fight. We fight, Father God, to bless you and protect the anointing, the deposit of the value that you have placed in every beloved child of God. So, Father God, bless us with your presence overflowing. Give us ears to hear, Father God. Give us a mind renewed. And I thank you, Father God, that you have cleared out the Holy of Holies so that Holy Spirit can reign and move as freely as he wants to. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. And all God's beloved said, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. Let's just give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give your beloved wife, husband, a child. Somebody give somebody a high five. A pet. Mm. Amen. Praise God. If you're physically by yourself, amen. Give yourself a high five. Hallelujah. Don't forget the angels. Praise God. Praise God. Give, out, give God's angels a high five. Amen. I love it. Praise God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh my goodness, we're blessed in the overflow. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Amen. Isn't it amazing that when you step into worship and you just, you just, you just allow God to take over. Amen. No more, no more thinking anything, nothing. I pray that right now over you in Jesus' name. Forget it. Amen. Forget it. God is head over heels in love with you. Jesus Christ is Lord. Holy Spirit is right there in every breath of yours flowing through your body, which is the body of Lord Jesus Christ, because we're all members of the body of Lord Jesus Christ. And how amazing is it that no matter what, we should be head over heels in love and excited for Lord Jesus Christ more right now than ever before. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Hallelujah, right? The time is coming near. Oh my goodness, the time is coming. Eternity is approaching us right now. Yes, we're eternal beings, but I'm talking about that trumpet going off, beloved family. And hallelujah. And that's why God titled Wednesday evening's worship service, Forgiveness. Amen. Now I know many of you, hallelujah, and I thank you for your words of encouragement. Praise God, I thank you for the text. I thank those that I don't even know for emails. Praise God, I thank them for just blessing Lord Jesus Christ, giving all the glory to Holy Spirit, and just saying, what a breakthrough it is, amen. When we worship, we just come together, amen. It has nothing to do with the preacher. It has nothing to do, it has nothing to do, you hear me? It has nothing to do with what the denomination is. It's all about Lord Jesus Christ. Everything to do with Lord Jesus Christ. And glory to God, when you receive Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, just like that, that next breath is in you and is in me as a believer. Amen. As a believer of Lord Jesus Christ. And I love getting all this feedback and praise God, all this encouragement as far as how the enemy has deceived many of us in that unforgiveness, right? And the glory of God is, Holy Spirit says, we're not done. It just gets gooder and gooder. Amen. And we're going to go into the written word and uh, hallelujah. Pray for me too. I, I pray that you have. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're listening to, this, listening to this on a Wednesday night or in 2023, 2023. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what year it is. God is Alpha and Omega. He knows that right now we would be worshiping Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And blessing Holy Spirit's presence. Amen. So hallelujah. Say with me, Lord Jesus Christ, have your way in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're going to be in John chapter 8, and we're going to just start in verse 1, and um, 
I, I'm so excited, amen. I thought we were going to be in another book, praise God, but this is where Holy Spirit wants us. So we're just going to be obedient to what always, amen, what Holy Spirit wants, praise God. And I'm so thankful because it's moments like this where I'm just, you know, just so excited. So let's just get right in, praise God. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him, and he sat down, and he taught them. So this was early in the morning, praise God, early in the morning, right? You would think probably 6, 7 in the morning, early in the morning, and he's in the temple, praise God. And that's what the written word of God says, Holy Spirit's the one teaching us through the living word, amen. So you could just see right now Lord Jesus Christ taking a seat with a bunch of people right now. And Agape, our Father God, is teaching us through the anointing of Holy Spirit, in Lord Jesus Christ. This is what is happening right now. Amen? This is what's happening right now. Check this out. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Pause. So they're having worship service with God Almighty. Right there, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And you can imagine as far as what Lord Jesus Christ was teaching all those who had ears to hear. All those who are receptive, amen, to be in the anointing to listen to Lord Jesus Christ. Now, crunchy comes in, right? Crunchy. Religion comes in. And now what does religion do right off the bat? They call out teacher. Mm. Listen to what Holy Spirit's teaching us right now. Because this right now is the world that we live in. Because we look towards man to be teacher. When only Holy Spirit is the teacher. And it comes through worship in just wanting to sit in God's presence like you are right now, beloved family. Like you are right now, taking the time out of your day to say, Father, bless me. I just want to say thank you, Father. I'm being obedient. Lord Jesus Christ, bless me with your word. Holy Spirit, teach me. Amen. But here are these people with the wrong heart. Once again, I said religious, right? Wanting nothing to do with Lord Jesus Christ, but yet they have the audacity to say, teacher, right? You see, the enemy wants to do everything he can to put a distraction and the way he puts that distraction in front of you is to try to find a way to hurt you to the point where you get offended. Because see, it's in that spirit of offense. It's that demonic spirit. Hear me now, because when you don't trust the Lord Jesus Christ in everything, and you get offended off of something, whether it's the way somebody looked at you, or whether somebody cussed at you, or whether somebody did something to you. Now, get, don't get me wrong, family. We're all human beings. I know this. But I'm just exposing to you what the devil wants to do. He wants to find something, find an in that he can distract you so you can take your eyes off of what God has called you to do. You see, right now, God divinely orchestrated Lord Jesus Christ to be seated at that very spot with those people that God has divinely orchestrated, amen, at that time to be around, to be in the anointing of Lord Jesus Christ that Holy Spirit can overflow to, amen? But yet, here comes the devil and his distractions, masked as religion, masked as religion, and the devil has the audacity. These demons have the audacity to say, teacher. Why in the world would they call him teacher when they don't even submit to his teaching? Whoo, hallelujah. Can I get an amen? You see, what Satan is trying to do right there is trying to snare Lord Jesus Christ to get him caught up. To get him caught up with what was said. Now listen, let's go forward, amen? Let's go forward because God wants to revisit this and we just need to be obedient. Praise God. This is what they said. Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses 
in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what do you say? Isn't this beautiful of how Holy Spirit would teach this word? We've preached it many times. Many of you know this line by line. Amen. I beg you right now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, put your hand over your head and say, Father, I get out of my mind and allow Holy Spirit to renew my mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, so here's God Almighty, Lord Jesus Christ, intimate, teaching, fellowshipping, worshiping, right? With beloved children of God that have ears to just hear, that just want to sit there and worship, to be taught. Can I get an amen? Here comes, like I said, religious people, right? Religion comes in. Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act. And in the law it says, and this is what Moses said, now what do you say? Now may I confess to you, is that not a mouthful to hear? May I also confess this to you? If you do not have a relationship with God Almighty, isn't it easy to emotionally get drawn into that conversation? and react emotionally, right? And notice what takes place. Verse six, this they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Say that with me, did not hear. You see, the enemy is fishing to get a reaction out of you and he hopes that the reaction you make in that split second will give him power to run havoc in your life. And the glory of God and the anointed Holy Spirit and what he's teaching us is that even when the situation looks the way it does, even when the report comes across the table and you read it and it's not what you wanted to see. And unfortunately, the devil, he distracted you because you read it, you processed it in the soul, and you know right now that there's a battle going on. See, God right now is teaching us. What Holy Spirit anointing is telling us is that even though it may look like this, ignore it. Rebuke it. It does not matter what the world says. All that matters is what Father God says. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Let's just give God praise on that. Amen. Who is God's word? <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And where is that living word right now? So, of course, the enemy's hoping that you would speak a word that goes against Lord Jesus Christ in reaction so that by faith, say that with me, by faith, the enemy is hoping that you will speak curses over yourself, over the situation, right? And I love this because here's what Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated, amen? Verse 7, so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and rode on the ground. Isn't that incredible? For all of us who already know this, for many, many years we know this. But yet what Holy Spirit wants to say and it's going to echo throughout all of eternity is that even though we know we have the written word of God in our hands now. Lord Jesus Christ, the living word, the word of God, the one who inspired every word in this holy Bible that Holy Spirit wrote through obedient, beloved children of God. Lord Jesus Christ is at the throne. Here we are, July 2020. We know this, 
we know Jesus Christ is Lord, we now have God who lives in us for all of eternity. But yet, we can still judge other people? But yet, we can grumble and complain and gossip? But yet, with the same mouth, we could say, Jesus Christ is Lord? But yet, on the, on the second part of that, we could speak about somebody? Beloved church family, listen. I have to be obedient to what Holy Spirit wants us to get as His holy church. Amen? Say it with me, no more. Because when we do that, it completely opens ourselves to the demonic realm. And Father God is saying, did I not do enough? Did I not do a perfect work through Christ, the Messiah? Did Lord Jesus Christ not teach us through this living example, through the living written word, and through the life of His living word in us through Holy Spirit? Remember, He was attacked through this distraction of these religious people who knew the scrolls. Knew, they knew the Old Testament. They knew the Old Covenant. They were looking at the new and trying to bring him back to the old. But then Lord Jesus Christ chose as if he didn't hear them. We talk about this all the time and I love it. Praise God. What did Lord Jesus Christ write on that floor, right? Amen. What did he write, right? Because if you know the terrain in the temple, that's hard. I mean, it's like cement. But God's hand wrote. Amen? And for me personally, in my relationship, in my relationship with Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit showed me that as those religious people, that they were standing there looking at Him, you know, you could just hear them mocking. You could, you could see it standing right over Him, right? Well, what do you say? What do you say? Moses said this, this is what the law says. And could you imagine that nobody's ever wrote, wrote on, on that ground like that? On solid ground like that? Imagine that. Solid, packed, right? Packed. Like concrete. But yet God's hand takes his finger and he writes on it as if it was sand on a beach. And I love to think, this is just me personally, amen, as a beloved child of God, that he was writing the law. But the beauty is, as he was writing it, and I believe that it matched in detail as far as what it was written originally on the tablets. I believe that. But I believe that he wrote, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. Amen? That Lord Jesus Christ was saying, here, you're so, you're so focused on the law, here, focus on what I'm writing. But of course, it gets gooder and gooder. It gets deeper than that. Amen? Because this is where Holy Spirit wants to take us, as if that wasn't already just incredible. Amen? So he writes, he, he just, he stoops down and he writes again on the ground. Those who heard it being convicted. Say that word with me, convicted. That's what Holy Spirit does. He convicts. Holy Spirit convicts. And what is this conviction in a relationship with God? Conviction falls. And what, what conviction does through Holy Spirit is God will tell you, you don't need to speak like that anymore. Don't do it. You don't need to drink that anymore. Stop. You don't need to smoke that anymore. You're hurting me. You don't need to talk like that. Don't do that. You need to be in fellowship with brothers and sisters. Come. You need to get right with me. This is conviction because it has to do with someone that is doing something against God's will. And Holy Spirit who lives in you and in me in a relationship with God, Holy Spirit, say His name, Holy Spirit, He will convict. What's the difference with condemnation? Condemnation is what the devil does to someone who just continues to draw a wedge in the relationship with God Almighty. Condemnation. Romans 8, 1 touches on that. I didn't know we were going to talk about that. But Holy, says, Holy Spirit said, touch on that. For there is now therefore no condemnation 
for those who are in Christ Jesus. The King James Version goes even more in depth. And I love that because it says, for those who do not follow the flesh, but follow the spirit. Amen? So we have to keep in mind that when we're being disobedient with God, condemnation comes from the devil where he tells that child of God, look at you. You thought that you were good, and look at what you're doing. That's condemnation. That's condemnation. Guilt, shame, ridicule, right? He is the accuser, so he just wants to keep accusing you. Conviction is, Holy Spirit says, my child, I love you. You don't need to do that. Amen? And that's Holy Spirit's voice. Praise God. So it says here in the, in the Word of God that conviction came on everybody who was there. Let's continue on. Praise God. Remember, we're in verse 9. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, amen, that's the soul, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Pause. Who was Lord Jesus Christ there with at the very end? Amen. Many of you said it. His beloved daughter. Right? So, Holy Spirit wants to teach us this. What happened? What happened to the ones that were sitting in His presence in worship, being taught by Lord Jesus Christ. The ones that he met with, and they all sat down, and Lord Jesus Christ was teaching them. What happened to all of them? You see, if we don't allow Holy Spirit to be God within our hearts, to control this life, every soul, every soul can be quickly misled, just like in this illustration. This is how the enemy deceives children of God. You see, they sat there wanting to learn, and Lord Jesus Christ taught, amen? He is God Almighty. But the moment the distraction came, where it was an opportunity to pass judgment, where it was an opportunity to prove I'm right and you're wrong, where there was an opportunity to talk about how much worse you are and how good I am, it's in the Word of God. This is a warning Holy Spirit is giving us right now. That without Holy Spirit, Every one of them left God's presence. And all who was standing was the perfect, only perfect one for all of eternity. His name is, say with me church, Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody left. And it was just Lord Jesus Christ and this beloved child of God. Amen. Will you choose on this glorious night to bless God and say, Father, I don't want to be led astray by anything. I only want to follow your Holy Spirit. I only want to worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I speak over my mind, over my soul, my eternal soul in you, Father God. I speak over my heart, the Holy of Holies, Holy Spirit, where you live in me for all of eternity. I speak, Father, to this body, the body of Lord Jesus Christ, that, Father, on this glorious day, on this Wednesday evening, I say unto you, Father God, be one in me and fill me in the overflow like never before, that I will not hear or see the distractions of the evil one, that I will hold firm to my faith in Lord Jesus Christ. And I will be sensitive to your Holy Spirit in obedience to what you speak over my life, what you teach me. And Father, and I thank you 
Because as you teach me about forgiveness, Father, you expose things in my life that try to persuade me either through emotions, lust, addiction, greed, no more in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Praise God. Verse 10, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one, no one, but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. Hallelujah. Salvation. Amen. Say it with me, salvation. Hallelujah. No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. We're going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit said, put it down. Praise God. We're going to put it down. Glory to God that Lord Jesus Christ teaches us this way. The Holy Spirit can get such a hold of us that it's beyond words and we can't even, we can't even really, that's where I'm just asking Holy Spirit right now. Because remember, no one was left. Amen? No one was left. And Lord Jesus Christ said to her, I don't condemn you. Because he could have thrown that rock. But we know God's a good and perfect father. Amen? And he loves us. And he sees this. Amen? But there's one last thing before we close tonight. The Holy Spirit wanted to touch on. And just to allow Holy Spirit to just bless us and to change our lives for eternity. You see, this message on forgiveness, we can sum it up already, and praise God in the past we have at this moment right here. But this is what Holy Spirit wants to say. We have all encountered Christ this way in the glorious relationship that we have with Father God. Praise God for many of us who are saved through Lord Jesus Christ for all of eternity. We have had this encounter with God and God says, I don't condemn you, I saved you. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And we know it because God is the only one good and glory to God, we pray, we make God laugh, amen, because it gets gooder and gooder because all we want is Holy Spirit's presence in our life overflowing. And it's in His holy presence that Lord Jesus Christ said, but how many times after this encounter that we have in our salvation into Lord Jesus Christ, do we ourselves pick up a stone and throw it at ourselves? May I do that again to show you? Pick up a stone that Lord Jesus Christ in His anointing, in His perfection, in His forgiveness, in His holy presence, Holy Spirit, everybody dropped their stone. Amen? Everybody left. Nobody could throw that stone. Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect one, didn't throw that stone. But Holy Spirit right now is asking us, is challenging us, how many times do we ourselves as children of God forgiven through the holy blood of the new covenant, how many times do we pick up a stone and we condemn ourselves for something? And God is saying right now, in Jesus' name, no more. Starting tonight, no more in Jesus' name. Amen? In a moment, we're going to pray. Hallelujah. And we are going to pray the prayer of salvation. Praise God. For there are those that are watching that maybe you've been running away from Lord Jesus or you haven't confessed Jesus Christ as Lord. God's going to give you an opportunity to repent of your sins, to say, I'm sorry, Father, for all the sins that I've done. I'm not worthy. God's going to give you a, a moment here, a moment in eternity, I like to say, to get right with Him and receive the gift of Holy Spirit that only comes through Lord Jesus Christ. But beloved church family, remember, if we do not forgive, God does not forgive us. And how many of us right now, as we worship together, whatever time it is, whatever day, what has the enemy deceived you in 
that you're continuously condemning yourself for, that you truly haven't forgiven yourself for. Right now, God is saying, did I not do enough through my perfect sacrifice? And I know you said, beloved child of God, yes, you did, Father. Some of you right now, some of you right now are crying. And praise God for that. That's Holy Spirit tears. Let it go. Don't fight back. Don't fight back with tears. Don't fight anything back when it comes to our Father God. But whatever it is, God is saying, will you forgive yourself and give that to me at the altar of your heart? Give it to Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, forgive me. I've condemned myself and I've been doing the work of the enemy. I've been the thief. And glory to God starting this day. Hallelujah. Starting this day. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. I know many of you are like, but it's evening. Hey, it's morning somewhere. Good morning. It's a new season, a new blessing. Amen. A fresh anointing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I plead your holy and precious blood, Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately you said, Father, lift up those right now who want to receive you. For those of you right now who want to receive Lord Jesus Christ, say this prayer with me. For I join you for all of eternity as one body in Christ, just leading you in this prayer. Heavenly Father, I am sorry that I sinned against you. Lord Jesus Christ, I need you as my Lord and as my Savior. Holy Spirit, be one in me for all of eternity. Father God, I plead your holy and precious blood I ask you, Father, to forgive me. Be one in me. Father, I thank you that for all the souls, Father God, who has said that prayer in the name above every name, your perfect sacrifice, your only beloved Son, Lord Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit, you have made your home in them for all of eternity. And Father, I thank you once again for all of eternity in everything that you have done and continue to do. Holy Spirit, we bless you and we thank you for teaching us, for you are our only teacher. And Father, as we plead your holy and precious blood, we thank you, Father, that all your angels are around us. Thank you, Father God, that you have come back for us and that we are raptured and with you for all of eternity. We love you, Father, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We thank you, Father God, for all of eternity. We worship you and you alone, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and we thank you, Father God, that your presence overflows through us as we love our neighbors as ourselves, Father. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. And all God's beloved said, Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know that this word blessed you tonight. It's all Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. We give God all the glory, honor, and praise. I want to say thank you so much, beloved church family. Praise God for blessing God with everything, for praying, hallelujah, for praying, praying for our, our elders, our deacons, our leadership, our church family. Listen, let's just pray for one another and not stop, hallelujah, because virtue from heaven flows through you in Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah. God is good all the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name, amen. Rejoice, hallelujah. Oh, love you so much, beloved church family. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll see you Saturday night, Saturday evening worship service. If not, I'll see you in the next half an hour. Amen. Thank you so much. Once again, let's bless God. Amen. Let's bless God with everything that we have, just being thankful. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We love you so much. We pray for you every day. Thank God for you all every day. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you, beloved church family. God bless. Mwah!